Let's talk about gear. Say you are into analog photography and you shoot on film, then you need to buy used cameras. I mean, there's no really way around it because hardly any new cameras are being made. Uh, and it's a little bit of a nightmare to navigate this mess. So I thought I share some of my experiences with you and I don't know, maybe give a piece of advice. So let me start by telling a few camera stories. You know, a few years ago I really wanted to get these Russian rangefinder cameras. These are uh, Leica copies and some people really like these. I bought one from eBay and the rangefinder didn't work at all. Uh, 25 euros or so, so not a big deal. And I bought the next one. And with this camera, the shutter is broken. I mean, with this camera, there's a shutter that moves sideways, so-called curtain shutter. And it's a common problem that it gets stuck or it moves unevenly. So with this camera, you get pictures like this. So then I stopped buying these uh, Fed 2s uh, and opted for an uh, Fed 1. Typically with Russian cameras, the older one you get, the better. I mean, they just deteriorated over the years and the new models are worse than the early ones. Uh, the Fed 1 came and it seemed like a good camera, but it was missing the take-up spool. And with Fed 1s, you can't replace the take-up spool because they are camera specific and you can't take one from another one and, and put it in. They most probably don't work. So if you miss the take-up spool, then the camera is worthless. So, I mean, after three cameras, two remain still with me because there's no point of sending them back 25 euros. You would pay more for the shipping cost. And with one fed that I sent back because that was $75 or so. So that's a usual story. By the way, one more advice with these old feds. You can be absolutely sure that you scratch your eyeglasses with these, so be careful. So then I went and bought another Russian camera. This is a nice Moskova 5, a rangefinder camera. Medium format, 6x9. It takes really beautiful pictures, but has light leaks. If you shoot a roll with this, you know, you can guarantee that two to four pictures are ruined because of the light leak. Um, but others are pretty okay. Then I bought a Spotmatic. And really the Spotmatic that I like, it's black, uh, it's the later version, and the light meter works. And I was pretty happy with it um, until the autumn came and it became cold outside and it stopped working. Now, this works only if it is warm. I opened it a few times, tried to fix it and lubricate it and went online to YouTube and tried to learn how to fix these things. No luck, can't fix this. An online purchase that for a moment looked like a good purchase, but uh, not really. And then what about my latest purchase? Mamiya C220, a really industrial looking great uh, TLR camera and you know I'm a fan of these two lens cameras. I bought it online, I was hand delivered though so I met the guy and it looked okay. It, and it was also pretty cheap so I don't complain. So then I got home and I noticed immediately a few things. The screen was upside down so I knew somebody had opened this camera and then the aperture setting is broken here so I mean you can set the aperture but you really need to put your fingernail down there deep and and it's kind of complicated but yeah you can do that you know and then observing the pictures I noticed that it focuses too close so if I try to focus somewhere you know the focus is actually closer to the camera so I knew immediately what has happened somebody has opened this hood and lost the little chimps between the ground glass and the camera that adjusts the height. So once again, an unusual piece of unless I go and start to fix it and the jury is still out whether I want to do it or not. Probably I'll try. 
And hey, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, I've done my share of bad purchases online. And so will you if you go online and buy stuff from eBay or some other sources. So what about then if you are careful online shopper and you only buy from trusted sources that seem to know what they are doing? Well, I don't think you are any better off. I mean, some people claim that they have done CLA, like clean, lubricate and adjust. But that means nothing. I mean, here is a lens that was CLA'd. Let me show you what they do when they CLA these things. There is so much oil within this lens. So first of all, you get all kind of reflections from these oily plates and then it drops oil on the lens. So I mean, most of the time when they do a CLA, they actually ruin the equipment. So that won't help you either. I mean, trust me, it's just CLA means nothing but that somebody had opened the thing and probably messed up with it. So, and as a general advice, grease and oil is not a friend of your camera. I mean, these are not your Hemi engines. You don't put oil into these. These are supposed to be pretty dry. So as you can see, I'm a bit disappointed with my online purchasing history. I mean, either I'm doing something totally wrong or then the internet is failing on me. And I think it is the latter one. You just can't rely on internet purchases. But hey, not everything is as bad as this. I mean, I had some luck too. I bought several Smenas and all of them have worked pretty well. So this is, seems to be a safe purchase. Also bought several Holgas. They all work fine. I bought these cheap Chinese, but these are new ones. These like couple of euros cameras. They all work fine. So it seems that the simpler is the camera, the better chances are it works. And the more complex it is, then it probably won't work. I mean, the worst is, is these, you know, panoramic cameras. I mean, none of these work. It's just not a single one. They, light leaks, uneven rotation, just too complicated piece of gear. And then, hey, these are, you know, over 40 years old. Some of these are a bit younger, so that also helps. So what about then buying from a brick and mortar shops? Like, so meeting with somebody, testing the camera and all that. So are you any better off doing old fashioned face to face shopping? Well, like this Mamiya that I showed you. I mean, I met with the guy, but it's really difficult to do all the inspection at the spot. And there's no way I would have known that it focuses wrong. I mean, he showed me some test pictures, but they've been obviously taken with F16, 22, so they all look sharp. And you would only know if it focuses wrong if you really shoot the pictures with the wide aperture close by. So. And then also there is no way of detecting light leaks really. Like my Moskva, most of the pictures are okay, but every now and then a light leaks in. To the extent that I really can't trust this camera at all. Not that you could trust an old Soviet camera anyways, but you know what I mean. So then you ask like, Am I doomed? Is this the best I can do? Or are there any tricks that I could do to, you know, have a little bit better chances? Well, I have a few suggestions. Um, hear me out. Uh, first of all, buy from a photographer. Buy your camera from another photographer. Not from somebody who is selling his or her grandfather's old camera or who is hoarding old cameras and dumping them online. But buy from somebody who has used the camera fairly recently, successfully, and who obviously takes photos himself. Buy from a photographer. Now, if you buy from an eBay online store, from a camera shop, uh, my experience is that you are not better off. 
it may be easier for you to return your camera and go through that hassle, but the cameras are not any better. It seems that the camera dealers don't really have the patience, skills or tools to go through the cameras that they don't know. They just, you know, push them forward to you. Buy only from photographers. The second thing, negotiate free shipping both ways. Like what I've successfully done is that I've contacted the seller and I said, I'm willing to pay 40 euros more. Uh, but I want you to pay shipping both ways. So that, that covers my cost, shipping it forth and back. Uh, and then for the seller, I'm willing to pay a little bit more. So I think that's a fair share. So try to negotiate those kind of deals. And then if you buy from a brick and mortar, or you can somehow inspect the camera before purchasing, there are a few tricks that you can do. First of all, you should check the shutter. The shutter is the most complex part in your camera and that is most difficult to fix if it's broken. And how do you check the shutter? In most of these vintage cameras there are two shutter mechanisms. There's one for the fast speeds and then there is another one for slower speeds. And it is always the slower speeds. You know, from one fifteenth of a second and slower, that gets stuck and broken. So the easiest way to figure out if your shutter is okay is to put the time in one second, cock the shutter, and then listen if it takes approximately one second for the shutter to work. It should sound something like this. Now this is what a healthy shutter should sound with one second. Then how does an unhealthy shutter sound like? Well, it sounds like this. It sort of hesitates. It could be even worse than this one, but that is how you can tell if the shutter is approximately okay. No guarantees, but I wouldn't buy the latter one when it gets stuck, if I was not ready to go through fixing it. Then check the lens, that there are no haze or scratches on your lens. That is also fairly simple to check. You want to open the camera, the back of the camera, and then you want to set the time to be or bulb mode so that you can keep the shutter open. And then you set the aperture to as wide as possible. You fire the shutter so that you keep the lens open like this. You look through it, you know, something shiny look outside and you should see the scratches and haze. Now once again, this is not a perfect way to check it, um, but it helps you to detect the most severe issues with your lens. In the front element, the scratches are not as dangerous as they are in the back element. So especially try to see if there are scratches in the back element. And for older lenses, you can start to get haze and even, even you know, some kind of a residue and some kind of mold and, and all kind of stuff growing on your lens. So if the camera had been stored in moist places, the chances are it might get pretty nasty. It is possible that you could wash away the fungus and mold uh, from your lens, but pretty often it grows inside of the lens structure and, and on top of the coating and all that, and it's pretty difficult to get it off. So that's why I'm saying that if you get fungus or mold on a lens, just don't buy the camera. It's just too big of a risk. So if you get a good deal with your camera and the shutter is somehow misfiring, you may want to consider fixing that or getting that fixed. Now if your lens is bad, just walk away. You can't fix a lens. Shutter, lens, then the uh, film transport is something that you want to check. And I bought this camera, this is really a nice camera, Certo, from an 
brick and mortar shop from Hungary and I really like this camera, small snappy thingy and this works pretty nicely. So how I tested this? So I had an empty roll of film with me at the camera store and I put it in and I tested that it works like the film advance works and it cocks the shutter with the film in. Having a dummy film roll and being able to check your camera with that um, is sometimes a good way to test that the film transport works. Uh, it's not a guaranteed thing but it might help you to find the most obvious problems with the film transport. What you can visually do is to check the rangefinder that it focuses to infinity Try to look as far as you can, set the lens to infinity and see if your range finder matches. Then you can check the light meter if it works. If it doesn't work with this kind of a little bit newer cameras, it may be just replacing the battery. If you can find the replacement battery, that's not always trivial. But the light meter for older cameras um, if they are broken, like the cameras that don't need a battery, that the light meter doesn't need a battery, if the light meter is broken, that's something that you can't fix. Now, can you live without the light meter? Most of the time, yes, but it's good to know if you negotiate the price. So remember to check the light meter. So as a summary, check the shutter with one second. Does it stutter or is it uh, smooth? Check the lens. Aperture wide open, look against the light, be concerned about big scratches, especially in the backside of the element, and then anything growing or any haze. And if the lens is bad, just walk away. Try to figure out the film transport. Maybe a dummy roll of film could help you to detect that. Uh, check the rangefinder, focus to infinity, see if that matches. Uh, check the light meter, if the needle moves and all that. If it has a battery, you might be okay if it doesn't work. If your camera doesn't have a battery and your light meter doesn't work, it's never gonna work. But still, the most common problem with these old cameras are the light leaks. And there's no way you can detect that other than shooting a roll of film. So, so, so far, my guidance have been that if you buy online, buy from a photographer. If you go to a brick and mortar, do some simple testing. Now in both cases your chances are that you know you don't detect all the errors and all the mistakes but you know you should be better off. But then by far the best way is to find your trusted source for used cameras. Now there's this company here in Finland called Camera Store where I buy most of my valuable gear. I mean, I know these guys, but they don't pay anything for this advertisement or this, this commercial. But I trust them fully because I've seen them working. They buy a lot of used cameras and they fix them. So they have a handful of really factory trained technicians who go through all the cameras that they sell. I mean, and not only that, they also have all the testing equipment for different camera manufacturers and for different camera models. So they can be sure that when they do adjustments, they are in factory specs. I don't know anybody else who does that in the whole wide world to that extent. So I met those guys and I've seen them working and it's just out of this world. Now the cameras will cost a little bit more. I mean, no wonder they spend hours on your camera to make sure it's perfect. So it's up to you if you are willing to take 50-50 chances and get something online or if you want to pay a little bit more, get a hassle-free buying experience and get a good camera. So, and as I said, this is not a commercial, it's just my experience. So yeah, that's about gear. I mean, I don't enjoy buying cameras and I don't enjoy you know, dealing with this crap. But, you know, sometimes you get lucky. And even with my Moskva that I bought online and it has light leaks, I enjoy shooting this, but I know that chances are that I'm gonna get a light leak and... Yeah, maybe I could actually try to fix the light leaks on this Moskva, it should be fairly simple. But I'd rather take photographs than fix cameras.
Hey, a small epilogue. Uh, it's been about two weeks since I made that video. And since then I bought yet another camera. I bought a Kiev 60. This is known to be one of the most unreliable cameras ever built. Uh, the film transfer is not supposed to work. It's supposed to have all kind of light leaks. The current shutter should be full of holes and fungus. All kind of problems. But I bought it from another photographer and he said that it works and he has fixed it and everything should be fine. I trusted him. I shot already a few rolls with it and everything is spot on. Everything works. So here's a proof that if you buy from another active photographer, your chances of getting a good piece of gear is much higher. And then another thing, uh, now this is for my wife, if she watches these videos. Um, yeah, I keep on buying cameras, I apologize. But hey, here is my explanation. Look at this. This is a Rolley 35S with f2.8 lens, with everything working, light meter, everything. And I bought it about two years ago and I paid uh, 75 euros. Just see their current going price and, and don't worry. This may be our retirement fund actually. Not that we would be retiring anytime soon, but you get the point. By the way, listen to this. It's like launching a missile.